Today's video is definitely gonna give you an insight into what being autistic feels like, but it might not give you a warm and fuzzy insight, okay? I've done plenty of videos that give you all sorts of insights, but this particular video will be providing an insight into what being autistic feels like when you're having bad days, when things become too much, and how it can catastrophize the way not only you see and experience life, but it, it can potentially have uh, genuine and significant impacts on your mental health. Now, to get things started, I just want to share with you a quick tweet that I saw today, which really resonated with me deeply because I'm feeling exactly the same at the moment. And I'm not gonna identify the person behind the tweet. I will say though that this person's autistic, but we'll keep their identity confidential. And also I'll paraphrase it, just so it depersonalizes it, but we still absolutely understand why it resonated with me and then we can unpack it. So the tweet read something along the lines of, I'm really hating myself more and more and feeling more like a burden on the people around me every day. That one tweet is the best and most powerful insight you may ever get today on what it's like being autistic. Okay, so let's dig deep into this. I'm an autistic guy. Okay, and I wanna give you experiences on what it's like to have a bad day. Well, I'm having, I mean, I'm definitely having a bad day, but I'm really having a bad week. And when I talk about bad days and bad weeks, what I mean is in my own internal experiences. Okay, it's not like I've lost family members, you know, or children have been unwell or hurt or injured or no, it's not that. My life is fine, but for me personally, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed by, I don't know, weight, darkness, emotion. My amygdala is going like the caveman. I'm just pumping cortisol and I'm just, my stress levels are just staying at peak and therefore everything's a bit rushed and fast and I'm tired, but I'm working overtime. I think it's probably a good way of how I'm feeling right now. The absolute core of being in a bad place or having a bad day for an autistic person can come across to other people is a bit hard to understand, or where did that come from? That kind of came out of nowhere. What's, what is all this about? And, and it can be very hard not only to understand and work out, but also very hard to deal with, very hard to be around. So this one, I don't think I'll be able to explain it better. This one little tweet perfectly summarizes a feeling that I can absolutely relate to. So the first part of this tweet, tweeted by an autistic person, talked about, hating yourself. As an autistic person, and being an autistic person can be a constant battle of, in my opinion, in my experiences, I can't speak on behalf of all autistic people, can be a constant battle of self-hate, self-loathing, zero value in yourself. I can't come up with all the different ways of explaining it, but I guess the best way to put it is, you know, being an autistic person can feel like you have no value. You have nothing to provide the community. No, and, and that doesn't, I don't think, necessarily just come from a different type of brain autistic people have. I think it also comes from a lifetime, and you'll hear this more from autistic kids, but I, I can hear this stuff from my seven-year-old autistic son sometimes. So it happens early, and it's proof that it's a portion of the brain we have and a portion of the community experience. From an early age, you, you don't get the feedback that you are a worthwhile member of the community or you have things to offer that are positive. Well, no, because the diagnosis period is purely based on deficits. They don't care about strengths, right? It's all deficit-based. And then you are given a diagnosis and it's your fault because you're the disabled person. Uh, the medical model says that, well, the community isn't disabling you. You're a disabled person in the community. What do you want us to do? Well, seriously where the social model looks at, well, it's the community that is disabling us, right? Rather than enabling us, we are disabled because the community's, I guess, expectations, but also the community's accommodations for people of disability. So going through life from a very early age and realizing that if you be your authentic self, not only will you make people feel very uncomfortable, but they will push back on you. They won't like you. You won't be able to maintain respectful friendships, and they won't accept you. You could be ostracized, kicked out of the herd, which is a human brain, a neurotypical human brain's worst 
possible outcome. As an autistic person with a different brain, it's not necessarily looked like that. Personally, in my experience, I don't really care about being part of a herd, of being, I guess, an approved or accepted part of the herd, or even requiring the approval or acceptance of any other person, where for neurotypical people, just again, just my opinion, neurotypical people, non-autistic people, have an inbuilt need, desire in their brain where they must be accepted by the herd. This comes right back. You go right back through the ages of brains being evolved over time. It's simple, right? I think it's intrinsically in here for neurotypical brains. I must be accepted by the herd. I must live my life and do the things in life that will gain the acceptance and approval of the herd, which, which is basically your community. And therefore, I know I'm on the right track. Now, my brain looks at that and goes, you must be a moron. Why would I do everything that I don't want to do that does not make me happy and do what they approve or accept or want me to do so I can be a member of this herd? To me, that seems like potentially one of the most bizarre mentalities. But this is a mentality that as an autistic person, and I can't speak on behalf of any other autistic people, but as my mentality is, well, that makes no sense to me, right? Why, I don't know. I'm not gonna give up my entire life so you guys can let me be a part of the herd. Because in the end, that's a waste of time anyway for an autistic person, because my experience is the community at large don't accept me anyway. It's a toleration, right? We don't accept autistic people right out of the gates and go, yep, you're autistic, you can be your true, authentic, autistic self for the rest of your life, and we will be totally understanding and accepting of that. Knowing you're different, we will absolutely be accepting and understanding of that here to help. No, no, not even your family and friends can promise that. And is isn't a personal attack on them, it's their brain. Their brain is not wired to understand interactions and, and dealing with people in a way that autistic people can deal with people. It's not, so it, it's two completely different operating systems, right? It's, they're not going to be compatible. So there has to be give on both sides. So I don't think there's a perfect solution here or a perfect world. And it certainly isn't about going, hey, world at large, you do everything and we'll just feel comfortable. Well, no, that's not the point. But the point is you have to understand right now, being an autistic person feels like on a day-to-day -day basis that you are from the get-go every day when you wake up, not someone that people will just want to be around. There's a difference between me wanting the acceptance of the herd and me wanting all the herds to just understand that I'm different, allow me to be my authentic self. You don't have to like it. You don't have to be my friend. You don't have to even go near me. I just don't want to be punished for being my authentic self. There's a big difference there. There's a difference between being accepted and just not being punished for waking up in the morning and being yourself. So I hate myself or I'm hating myself more and more resonates with me because there is no other option. You could talk to Many autistic adults, in my opinion, not all, but many. And I bet if you actually had a genuine open conversation with them, I bet they would have some degree of self-loathing, some degree of self-hate. I, I can't see how it wouldn't be the case. Even people in genuinely loving and healthy lives and relationships and families, which I'm one of them and I know many that are too, even them, there they, they still has to be a level of self-loathing and self-hate. So what being an autistic person feels like is you wake up every morning, and this is my experience, and you automatically completely hate everything about you because everything about you makes everything hard. Everything about you makes your starting position, you wake up and your starting position is the community, in, in my brain, in my opinion, hate me, do not like me, do not see my worth, despise the idea that I'm different and I could use that as a way of being different. This idea that, hang on a second, he, he's too honest or he's too rude, but he says he's autistic and that's his excuse, right? You, oh yeah, using, using autism as an excuse for being honest and rude, are you? No, I'm not using it as an excuse. It's a diagnosed neurodevelopmental disability that I was formally diagnosed with. I'm being myself. The logical black and white concrete 
way of thinking, which is this is wrong, this is right, I am honest, why would anyone not want to be honest? All those things allow me to only think that's the way to communicate. If you think that I like being an autistic person, so I can wake up in the morning, try and be my true authentic self to a percentage through the veil, through the camouflaging, through the mask that I put on without even knowing I put on it, because I've been trained from day one, don't be yourself, don't be yourself, try to be like them, be accepted, be accepted, be accepted, don't really care what they think, but if I don't care what they think, I'll have no life, you know, it's like, it, what other solution, what other outcome do you see happening from the get-go that that happens? If that's all you've been trained to do and you're trying to be your true authentic self to a percentage through that veil, which you know you've got to put on every day, and you still don't actually achieve any level of breakthrough, of cut through to the kind of not being punished. The acceptance and understanding is super important, but it's almost, in my opinion, unattainable in my lifetime. I legitimately think in my lifetime, and I'm, I'm 72 years old, in my lifetime, it is unobtainable that the community, the world at large, will genuinely understand me as an autistic person and accept my true, authentic, autistic self. I don't believe it's obtainable. Now, even if that isn't the case, if that's my mindset, just from my lived experience, just from my lived experience of being an autistic person, I can talk to groups of non-autistic people on Zooms and in meetings and they ask me questions and ask my advice. I can do that every day of the week. But I guarantee you, the only person that's right after they ask an autistic person about autistic issues, in the end, is them. In the end, they're going to do what they want to do. They're going to do what's best for them, what's right for them, whether it's their business, their customers, their clients. It's not good or bad for them, it's bad for me. So sometimes I think people expect me to talk to them or interact with them like I am an academic person. Like this is a field I've studied. Right? I don't have the luxury of being able to study the feel of autism and go home at night and forget about it. I don't have that luxury. I'm autistic every minute of my life. You don't grow out of autism. You grow into it, my friend. <laughs> you are born autistic, you die autistic. So the self-loathing, the hating yourself more and more each day is something that resonates with me so strongly. And if you're not autistic, just think about it. What if your own level of self-worth decreases, not increases, decreases effectively every day you're alive? And it's, it's initiated by your interaction with the world at large. What if that was your existence? How would that make you feel? Because that's what it feels like being an autistic person. You are fighting to be yourself. And being yourself very rarely has any outcome but negative. It can cost you employment. It can cost you relationships, friendships, education. I'm struggling to work out my value, not only to myself, but to my family and my community. But these are the things that after, after a lifetime of people saying, you can't be like this, you can't talk like this, you can't act like this, you're not allowed to be this person around here, like, you know, been told that you aren't a good person. You aren't valued, respected. You aren't the kind of person we want around. With a lifetime of that, what other option do you think my brain has in it? Tell me, well, look, for the most part, mate, there's really nothing you can provide that's beneficial to anyone. So let's talk about the second part of this tweet now, which again, was tweeted by an autistic person and resonated with me so deeply and I think it's, it's a critical conversation to have. The second part, so we've talked about the hate part, hating yourself more and more each day. The second part was feeling like a constant burden on the people around you. So this idea that you're nothing but a burden to be around or a burden on the people around you is a super, super important thing to not only think about, but talk about. And firstly, I'd say like the self-hate and self-loathing, I think feeling like a burden on people around you is another thing that I feel like increases every day. And in, it's almost in tandem, this idea that when I'm around people or just people being around me, all I really am is just a heavy burden, a weight on them. And 
The first thing you think about is, okay, so number one, if an autistic person, and I'm one of them, and I can only speak on behalf of me, and clearly the person, autistic person that tweeted that is saying the same thing. If I, if I just wake up every day and I feel like look, I'm just a burden upon those around me or a burden to be around in general, I'm starting at a pretty bad place. Okay, how on earth can I ever get back to an idea where I could ever think that it would be possible for me to just be my authentic autistic self. If every day I feel like I'm more of a burden on people around me or just more of a burden to be around, why would I then add more layers of my authentic self? Well, I'd take them away, right? I would, I would strengthen the mask. I would camouflage more. I would become less and less of myself until I was indistinguishable from my neurotypical peers to whatever level I can achieve. And to the point where a lot of adults who are diagnosed as adults don't even know who their real person is. They don't even know who the real authentic them is. Okay, well how am I supposed to find me though? Honestly, I really think a middle-aged autistic person would be the equivalent, and it sounds bizarre, but this is my experience, a middle-aged autistic person is the equivalent of basically an 80-year-old neurotypical person. That's how you feel, how you've aged, how tired you are with life, how tired you are with how hard life can seem, and this is where I feel I'm at. But let's I guess try and work out, okay, so where does this idea come from that you could be more of a burden to be around every day or you could be more of a burden on the people around you? There's a complexity to this that I still don't completely understand why, but again, you, people talk about this empathy level and really everything is can be hypersensitive as an autistic person. I think you're, you can be super sensitive and, and the empathy is at a much higher level when you see the people around you burdened by your being yourself. So you could call it your behavior or you could call it the way you act or your level of meltdowns or burnouts, or shutdowns or reactions to sensory things, you know, whatever those things may be. It's complex, but if I'm looking at it and I go, okay, this is how me being me has just affected, say, my wife. I've communicated with her. I've just been me. I've just let my guard down, put my mask off and just been me. And this is how it's burdened her or affected her. Okay, so she has taken it as offensive or rude or aggressive or you know whatever the way is. And the first thing I always try to try to remember is in this situation, neurotypical people becoming burdened by the way you've spoken to them because of things that as a rule, autistic people don't actually control or have insight into is always gonna be problematic. As an autistic person, your tone, the pace, the volume, and I guess the way you convey an opinion is very different to how neurotypical people are built to hear things. So there's no sugarcoating, it's just straight, right? It's just straight, honest response answer, which can come across raw or brutal, but it's just black and white concrete straight, here's what I think. And a lot of people go, well, you know, I love your honesty or you're so honest or wow, you're brutal. Or, and so, but these are all, all descriptions, but no, I'm just a person answering your question. Also, autistic people, and I've talked about this in videos, can have, me in particular, my son as well, my seven-year-old autistic son, can have volume control challenges. So we don't really realize it, but we may speak louder in any situation and it comes across... Obviously, to people like, why, well, shh, you're being too loud, or why are you talking so loudly? Or there's no, I mean, do you have a volume switch? Like, you know, so it's not uncommon for autistic people to not have a volume switch, to not be aware of it, but to speak louder. It's also not uncommon for autistic people to, to not know, not only the volume, but the tone. The way, did I sound aggressive? I, I was just, honestly, in my mind, I was just straight talking, right? I didn't mean to sound aggressive or rude or whatever. And not only is it the, the tone, but also it's the speed. If you are talking loudly and fast, and there's a tone that's coming across, rude or aggressive or whatever, it can be really overwhelming for a neurotypical person. Now, none of those factors as a rule in the heat of moments can be averted or controlled through an autistic brain. You don't get a diagnosis of a neurological developmental disability and have 
the ability right out of the gate to understand, acknowledge and control these types of things that are linked to having a neurological developmental disability. So again, it's, a, it's an idea of being punished for being ourselves, but in addition being punished for not being able to control being ourselves when some of the challenges we have are exactly related to why it's coming across like that. And then you realize, okay, I can't control because of the way I don't actually, I, I actually don't know I'm talking loudly or fast or the tone is wrong or I'm not sugarcoating it, which I'm not, not entirely sure even how to do that, to be honest with you. As I said, it's not something that can usually be acknowledged or controlled by an autistic brain. But then the people receiving it are going to not only find it potentially uncomfortable or offensive, or it, it affects them in, in some way or another emotionally or however it affects them, but they're also gonna be potentially upset and angry that you would dare treat them or talk to them like that because they don't accept that or they don't have to be treated like that or talked to like that and you should know better and you should stop doing that. And when you put those things together, you've got, you talked to me in a way that's bad, you didn't need to do that, you know you can't do that, and you better stop doing it, with, I didn't know I talked to you bad, I didn't know I was loud or fast or my tone was bad or if it was offensive or aggressive or rude, or I didn't, and, and not only did I know I was doing that, I wouldn't have been able to control it or avert it because it's a social interaction where you've asked me something and I've answered it or I've jumped in on a conversation and, what am I supposed to do? Stop myself and wait for my brain to achieve a goal that it's not built for the most part to achieve. So, okay, I guess I'm stuffed. I guess what I'm learning from this is as an autistic person, all I'm ever gonna do when I open my mouth is burden you, emotionally weigh you down, affect you in a negative way. If all I'm going to do is affect people around me in a negative way, then that is a burden that I should stop putting on them. Because think about this too. How would that make you feel? Because I tell you, it doesn't make me feel good. If you think I get pleasure as an autistic person out of interacting with someone in a way I think is completely legitimate, achievable, normal, acceptable, and every time that happens, it's not to them or they take it the wrong way, and this is many reasons. They might not like the truth. They might not accept the truth. They might accept the truth, but don't like the way you said it to them, or it was too brutal. It wasn't sugar-coated or gentle enough, right? Or, which I don't even understand. Now, the tone was wrong, the volume was wrong. I mean, there's something about all this that overwhelms me to the point where I think, okay, well then, that's cool. I can't, I'm not sure how I can ever not be my authentic self, I can't, and masking doesn't help. You can mask things, but you can't mask your brain, right, in communication. And if this is not achievable, my only option here to not burden you is to completely withdraw from you. If you wake up every day and you feel like just being your true authentic self, but in addition to that, acknowledging that you have challenges with a neurological developmental disability, and no matter what you do, you will burden people by simply being around them, by simply interacting with them, being yourself around them, what inside you would feel good? How would you get out of bed on the two things we talked about, feeling like, well, every day, I, I like myself less, right? I hate myself more, and I'm just a burden on people because it seems like, to me, in my experience, Every interaction, every conversation, anything, anything to do with me and the outside world or the people in my family, for the most part, not every time, but for the most part, burdens them, affects them in a negative way. How can I do this? How can I break this cycle? How can I, how can I allow myself, well, I can't allow myself to burden these people. I don't want this to happen. It's not, it's not ever my intention. It ha seems to happen all the time, no matter where I go or what I do. The only thing I can think of is, okay, well then just don't interact with people. You can see how complex this is. You can see why it's a bad week. It's been a bad week for me and it's a bad day for me. Because my brain is, is so conflicted. At the core here isn't about me feeling burdened by burdening you. 
It's about me feeling just bloody horrible. Why would I want to burden the people that I love, the people that are important to me, simply by being myself? And it's, a fa it's factual. M more times than not, just opening my mouth and trying to just be me, a, 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 just a genuine person, myself to, my, to people in, in my life, it comes across the, the wrong way. It's misinterpreted or, or it's taken the way that I would never have thought it would be taken. Going through all that, you can see that it doesn't make me feel good. It makes me feel yuck, okay? Which will make me feel all sorts of potential emotions. But as an autistic person, I might not feel the subtle emotions, right? I might not go from little emotion to next little emotion. Basically just uh, intense anger or intense sadness, intense agitation. And then if I'm around people and I'm intensely sad or intensely angry or intensely agitated, well, that's a, a new burden on them. Now they're around someone who not only in their mind, you know, doesn't talk to them properly or can't talk to them properly, that they're also making them feel horrible because no one wants to be around an intensely angry person. No one wants to be around an agitated person. No one wants to be around a sad person. Who wants to be around these people? I don't want to be around these people. I don't want to be around myself, to be honest with you. What being autistic feels like on a bad day or on bad days is an intensity that I don't think I can truly ever convey to you in no way better than the tweet we just talked about. If you can think about that, you will have a better insight into what it's like being an autistic person on bad days than anyone could ever teach you. This video is in no way intended to bum you out, get you down, I don't know, over inflate something, or dramatize anything. All it really is is, hey, turn on the camera, let me have a chat, let me share some things that are on my mind, and hopefully give you an insight into what being autistic is like when you're having those really bad days. And I hope it's resonated with you. If it has, please share it with your family and friends. We can reach more people doing that. And if you'd like to check out more of my videos, well, feel free to do that too. Plus, I'd love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and help us reach more people to raise that level of understanding and acceptance of autistic people right across the planet. Until my next video, thanks for watching.